downtown Camelsville. Located in the center of Kentucky, Camelsville has a very rich history, with the centerpiece being the downtown area. Camelsville has several historic sites as listed under Taylor County in the National Register of Historic Places listings in Kentucky. Downtown includes a main street and a designated historic district. The 100 and 200 block of Main Street are lined with century-old brick, stone, and iron buildings with Italianate architecture facades. Today we will focus on five businesses, Cozy Comforts, Chandler's Office Supply, Tucker Diamonds and Gold, Mitchell's Menswear, and Cafe Bonet. Each business will discuss its history and share past memories of downtown. Our first stop is Cozy Comforts, a business and building that has been around for almost 100 years. Cozy Comfort, uh, 305 East Main Street, Campbellsville. I bought this building in uh, uh, December of 1989, and we renovated it for a retail business, and we opened it up July the 3rd, 1990. I had 100% retail. We sold bedspreads and comforters, dust ruffles, and we had placemats, chair pads, and things like that. Um, it's hard to find parking sometime on Main Street, so I work with uh, the Jackson Tire people and their retired, you know, residents. So some of them came down and they wanted to know if I would heal a pair of their curtains. So that started me on renovations of, um, or restorations of curtains and dust ruffles and all kind of home decor. When the word got out that we did alterations, I started hemming jeans, putting in zippers, and hemming just simple skirts and sleeves and that simple things. The building had sat empty for about 10 years, and previous to that, they had shown horror movies in the Old Cozy Theater. And you can tell by the, the hardwood floors and the ceiling that it was a theater for many years. I think it started in 1936, and uh, this is when we had the, the black community, and they had to go upstairs to the balcony, and then they opened it up to where the, the, the couples had the upstairs balcony. So a lot of changes have taken place in our community. Moving up the street is Mitchell's Menswear, a clothing store for men that has been in the Mitchell family for three generations. My name is Laura Wilds, Laura Mitchell Wilds, and I am the third generation of Mitchell's Menswear. My grandfather started it in 1910 with his brother-in-law. And uh, it actually started down the, down the street at the Merchant's Tower in one of the little buildings right beside it. And then in 1919, the partner, the Hatcher Mitchell, uh, the Hatcher got shot and killed in a gunfight. Yes, that's another story another time. <clears throat> and so, um, over a married woman. And, you know, and so, um, they, they sold the business, uh, they, sell this. they closed the business down there and moved it up here. So in 1920, this was an old hotel and it burned and so they put two buildings back in its place and my grandfather bought this. We've been here since 1920 in this location. So we are, this is our 100th birthday. Back in the like, mid 20s, late 20s, early 30s, there they did sell boys, men's and boys. Um, pretty well got out of that before World War II. My grandfather um, kept the business going through World War II, and then his two sons, which would be my father and my uncle, took over in the late four, mid 40s. <clears throat> and, excuse me. And then um, I took over in 1990. Chandler's, an office supply business, has been in business for three generations, going back to the 1890s. Okay, I'm Bill Chandler. Uh, we are at 210 East Main Street. I've started, I guess, uh, uh, most of my life. I was down here as a baby, <laughs> probably asleep on the counters a lot of the time. But uh, working in the business, I worked in here as a child, a uh, teenager, and uh, even later. But really, I started working, I guess, in the business in the late 50s, early 60s. started in 1892, and uh, my grandfather was dead before I was ever born, but uh, he started the business, and uh, I said to somebody one time that it was probably like a general store, and the lady that knew better said, oh no, this wasn't a general store since it was a novelty store, and uh, 
In fact, the tax name still goes as Chandler Novelty Company. All the tax forms and everything is Chandler Novelty Company. So now, what the difference is between Chandler Novelty Company and the general store, I don't know. Yeah, I can remember as a child when I was working in here, the things that we sold then, we sold uh, fishing poles, and we had fishing poles in here, fishing hooks, you know, come in buy two or three fishing hooks. We sold guitar strings, sold guitars, French harps, uh, we sold magazines, sold uh, rented books even. Novels. We rented novels to people. We uh, sold Bibles. We sold a lot of Bibles. Uh, magazines, greeting cards, gifts. At Christmas, we would sell toys. We sold office supplies even along through the years. School and office supplies through the years. In fact, at one time, we even handled the textbooks for school the state's are the first in the textbooks. We sold textbooks in here and a lot of school supplies. Uh, and we were selling uh, office supplies of them. The business in 1892 when it was established, as I understand it, it was across the street in part of what is now Citizens Bank. It was over there for about two years in this building presently here. Uh, about two years later they moved over here. I don't know whether my grandfather built the building or whether it was here and he just bought it or what uh, at that time. Now that side of the building where the office furniture is now, we had gifts and greeting cards and that kind of thing over there. Tucker Diamonds and Gold, a jewelry store that has been in business since the 1940s. We are at 121 East Main Street in Campbellsville, Kentucky. The business is called Tucker Diamonds and Gold. Uh, the business started by my mom and dad in 1948. It was, it was named um, Tucker's Jewelry. Tucker's Jewelry. Uh, it's been several names, Tucker's Jewelry, Tucker Jewelers. And uh, we went to incorporate uh, the name in 19... 96, there was already that name in the state of Kentucky, so we changed it. We changed it mostly because we we don't sell, we sell our services, but we primarily sell diamonds and gold, so we just went with that name. It made sense. Uh, evidently in the early years, uh, when I was a kid, and even before, before that, uh, they said that they mostly did watch repairing. They sold watches and repaired watches. Uh, I've seen pictures where they sold candy, uh, sunglasses. Uh, I remember cigarette lighters and wallets, billfolds, and ladies' wallets. I remember that very distinctly. They were big sellers. And we also sold uh, cologne. Oh, one thing I left off too is that years ago, evidently they sold razors. If you wanted uh, an electric razor, you went to a jewelry store. That's where it introduced. So, uh, jewelers, evidently in the 40s and 50s and maybe even the 60s, um, introduced a lot of products that were new in the market. And then it left, such as the electric razor, for example. Um, and then it, once they got started, once they set up a niche, became popular in the jewelry stores, they went out into the common market, is what I would call it. Uh, we now specialize in just jewelry. Well, we've, been, we've always been in the same building, but uh, we were on that side of the building, now we're on this side of the building. The, the building has always been subdivided, this particular building. The building was built in the 1880s, and it was always built to contain two stores, kind of like a mini shopping center, <laughs> if you want to call it that. Uh, up until from 1948 to 1980, we were next door in a smaller location and in 1980 we moved on this side. Right before we moved here it was a Singer sewing machine store. Before that I remember I used to get my hair cut here. This was called Camisel Barbershop and they also had uh, they had about um, five or six stations 
of chairs, and on the other side against the other wall, uh, you could get your shoes shined. So they had a shoe shine uh, department. And so I remember getting waiting for my haircut. I'd get my shoes shined and then get my haircut here. Before that, it was a grocery store and a hardware store. Next door, uh, where we used to be, that's now a shoe store. And of course, we were there for a number of years. And before that, it was a restaurant. And uh, going way back, it was a bank. It was a bank there, a bank called Farmers Deposit Bank. And it was very successful until one day a bank examiner came in, in, the, in the bank and the bank president at that time pulled a gun on him and told him to get out. That was the end of the bank. <laughs> These businesses, along with countless others, have seen the best and worst of downtown. Big business came to Camelsville and moved to the outskirts of town, pushing people away from downtown. Soon after, Fruit of the Loom, a factory that employed over 4,000 people, was shut down after incorporating itself into Camelsville. I was Main Street Manager for four years, 1988 through 92, and the way they explained it to us is we wanted to bypass downtown, and we as a body are the Main Street, and our arms and our legs represent the branches of our community, and people saw that they wanted to bring the trucks around the city instead of through the town, and then with shopping centers and, you know, industries coming in and everything, that's what kind of closed down. And if you can't see Main Street, then it's really hard to shop downtown. And uh, so we had some problems of uh, our parks belts and our Lermans, and we knew they were already getting ready to leave town in the next two or three years. So we had to rethink retail. We had to rethink, you know, what would bring the children downtown and the, the community as a whole, the teenagers, other than just cruising Main Street. Um, all businesses in town, um, especially the downtown, we um, built all of our promotions around the second Thursday, or, uh, every other Thursday, so every two weeks the factory was paid, and we would have a promotion that was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and you just knew that because they made good money, they made um, very decent wages, it was hard, hard work, but very decent wages. When you graduated high school, you went to college or you went to the factory. There were no other industry in town. There was no other industry in town because there, the unemployment rate was so low here because the factory took you know, was four thousand workers, you know, and it took people from counties around driving in every day to, to keep that booger going. And so, <clears throat> uh, but people would come from all different towns to shop here. Um, it's quite a shopping hub, you know. And so I remember the talk of. Um, factory troubles in the works uh, when, the, when the owner, present owner of the loom, when he bought it, we were all very nervous because he had a reputation of, of coming in and buying factories and closing them down and we were all very nervous about that. But at the time we were all sure that Camelsville was going to become a ghost town and we were all very, very afraid um, business as we know it would end. And all of us would just close up the would be dust balls flying up and down Main Street. Fruit of the Loom was one of our better customers. And uh, uh, you had to sell to get their business, of course, you had to sell it at a real premium, contract in the office supplies and equipment. Uh, but they were a good customer, sure. I don't know why or how. It's amazing to me when they close off, oh, man, this is going to be horrible. When Fruit of the Loom was here, and keep in mind they hired over 4,000 people, they got paid every other week on a Thursday. Every other week on a Thursday at 4 o'clock. They always got out at 4 o'clock. Uh, there was a huge traffic jam downtown every day at four o'clock. And for the loom left, or before they left, uh, there would always be a huge traffic jam on Main Street. Uh, that we did a lot of business from four to five o'clock because of people coming from work 
and since there was a traffic jam, they would pull over and I'd come in the store. We did a lot, a ton of business, just with For the Limb. In fact, as promotions, we always, always timed our promotions according to payday. In fact, on the older calendars, we would have every other Thursday, we'd have payday, 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 and we always planned the promotions on the For the Limb payday. The whole, the whole town did that. That was always the big weekend was when Fritherlin got paid. When they weren't paid, nothing happened. So promotions were never planned. And if they were planned, uh, they were not very successful. So basically the entire town of Camelsville ran according to Fruit of the Loom. Um, we had just built a huge big water system in Campbellsville um, to a kind of, I'm sure you've heard about that too. That, the, and then actually the mayor called and said, Mayor Miller at the time called and said, are you, you know, we, we're going to do this huge multi-million dollar water treatment facility, water, you know, system. Are you sure you're going to be here? And they said, most definitely we're going to be here. And it wasn't any time until they announced they were closing. It was, it, keep in mind, it was a huge, it was just a huge change. Because you had uh, by far our largest employer, over 4,000 people, and all of a sudden you don't have that anymore. And that's before Amazon located here. In fact, the Amazon building uh, was built to be a Fruit of the Loom distribution center. And so they had a huge bit in there. As far as the business aspect, it really dropped off. It was really a big, uh, a big difference when they closed up. You can imagine losing that many people. Downtown was becoming a ghost town until about two years ago when a restaurant opened up, Cafe Bonet. Hey, my name's Lauren Mattingly, and we're at Cafe Bonet. My mother and stepfather own the restaurant, and I'm the GM, the general manager. I basically run the day-to-day -day business. It was two years ago in March of 08. Um, well, it was kind of my mom's, I would say, I guess dream, you would say, to open up a restaurant. and. Um, she had always thought that the downtown needed a little spark, so it was something that she kind of came up with just as a something to do for fun type thing, you know, outside of her actual regular day-to-day -day business. I think they're, they weren't exactly coming into it with the idea of making a lot of money because the restaurants are very, um, hard to make a whole lot of money, especially starting out, but their initial idea, I believe, was to kind of help re revitalize the downtown because it was, you know, basically becoming a ghost town at, at that time, and they thought this would be a great way to uh, generate people down here and, you know, kind of, kind of wake it back up for good. It's been, it's been great, actually. Um, we started off really really busy and we've pretty much continued that um, throughout the two years. We actually expanded our hours and um, the, the weeknights have been uh, progressively increasing. Um, every week's gotten better and better so I think that um, it's just taking time for people to realize that there's life downtown and um, that we're open more now first started, we were open from 6.30 a.m. in the morning until 3 p.m. Monday through Friday, and that was it. We were just breakfast and lunch. So um, about a year ago, we decided to add a dinner menu, so we added that, and we were only open on Friday and Saturday evenings for dinner. And then from there, we decided that we would take the next step and extend our hours even more through the, through the week, like I just mentioned, um, for dinner also. And we've made a couple changes. Um, Mondays were kind of our slowest days, and we thought since we were expanding our hours in other directions that we could just drop our Mondays, so we are closed on Mondays now. Um, so just to kind of give us a break from, from everything. So one difference is that the, the businesses that have been established here for a while, uh, yes, we had our lane years when for the loan closed, but our business has been pretty consistent. Um, 
And so when downtown wasn't alive, there were several of us that really, we just kept on and we did pretty good business. Uh, the difference is, is that before the restaurants open, our customers would just pull into the parking place, come in and uh, transact business, and then they'd get in their car and leave. All right, kind of a one-stop type of thing. Uh, the advantage of having the restaurants open is that now we're getting back our walk-by traffic. So people are not just coming, say, to just our store or just to Chandler's or other stores. They're, they're coming for other reasons and they're staying downtown longer. And that's exciting. Our hours have had to change. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, one really neat thing I want to add in there is that used to, late in the afternoons and on Saturdays, we would park our own cars out on Main Street to make it look like there was traffic in town, make it look like there were people in the stores, and there wasn't. It was quiet, it was dead, you know. And, and now with uh, three restaurants on the street, and uh, some have said, was it because of the moist law? I don't think so at all. I think it's just the three restaurants that, um, you know, have caused this. And um, so anyway, we're starting to see um, just a different, uh, different type of people, a different type of traffic um, up and down the streets. And now you can't find a parking place, and we have to park even farther away, farther away, you know, where we used to park on the street. So. Yeah. Oh, I think it's done this. It's exposed downtown businesses to more people. I've had people since the cafes have opened up that have been in this store that I've never seen in here before. I think they maybe have come down here to eat lunch, so they, you know, maybe they have a few minutes to kill. And they may come in the store, they may or may not buy anything then, but they, I've had that opportunity to expose the business to them and they may come back later on, but they can't, it can't hurt anything, it can't do anything but help when you have more people that are in the downtown area. It, it, to me, it's amazing in, in the evenings We'll lock up. We stay here later than most stores on Main Street. We're here to six or seven o'clock at night. A lot of nights when I leave the store here, the street is full of cars, and they're at the one of the three restaurants: uh, you know, the Pizza Rio, the uh, Cafe Bun, or uh, Happy Days. And it's great. I love that. You know, and I think some of the stores are starting to stay open at night. Thank you. It's definitely a great idea for the, them to do it because we have got we've got people down here, so it's an awesome way for them to you know, increase their their business, and it's great for us too because the more life down here, the more fun it is for everyone, and the you know, better time. Due to the success of Cafe Bonet, other restaurants have opened up, attracting even more people to the area. With downtown Camelsville becoming the place to be again, a prosperous downtown is just over the horizon. The only place to go now is up.